Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm gonna to be shooting some of the new Polaroid SX-70, but also doing just a little bit of SX-70 repair. A few months ago, Polaroid Originals, originally the Impossible Project, rebranded to just being Polaroid. As part of that, they've also claimed that, you know, they've updated the chemistry, things have, you know, gotten a little bit better. And the best way to kind of judge that is just to shoot the stuff and see how it looks. Now, I recently did pick up a pack of Polaroid's SX-70 film. It took two shots in my trusty SX-70 here. And these two shots came out looking a little less than stellar to me. And I mean, SX-70 stuff in general is kind of meant to have this kind of like soft looking quality to it. But also, uh, this stuff is not necessarily what I was expecting. Now there is some great contrast in these shots in certain areas. The stuff at the bottom of the image and like, especially like the darker areas of like their clothing does have great contrast. And that's something that I think looks really good on this stuff. My main concern is that considering that this was like bright sunlight mid afternoon, which is really good shooting conditions for this stuff, it's coming out with not the best exposure. Now I have pointed fingers at Polaroid before about, you know, kind of not doing enough to kind of keep pushing forward with this whole project, but instead kind of relying on just the fact that, my God, they brought back Polaroid and that isn't necessarily enough. But this stuff is too easy to just point fingers at the film. So instead, I'd like to turn my attention towards the camera. So today, I'm actually gonna take the faceplate off this camera and I'm gonna clean the light sensor on the SX-70. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And I'm also gonna supply some links down below in the description to the resources that I use for doing like SX-70 related repair work or just like little stuff like that. Cleaning the light sensor on your SX-70 can be a somewhat simple repair job, but it does really depend on the model that you have and the quality of the sensor itself that you have to clean. I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol for cleaning as well as just some Q-tips. The light sensor component is located behind this clear window at the front of the camera, which requires us to remove the faceplate of the SX-70. Now on certain models, this means you have to remove the screws behind the faceplate here. This can require a special screwdriver, but also makes the repair much, much more difficult. I'm gonna include some information in the description below about this. This model though allows me to just pop the faceplate off. First, I'm gonna remove the film door, which can be done by just squeezing the hinges and then pulling it out to unlatch it. Then the faceplate can be removed by pulling the sides out and then just slowly wiggling it off the camera. If you encounter a lot of resistance here, then that probably means that you do need to unscrew the pieces at the back. Just be slow with it and just kind of work it until it comes off so that nothing breaks. This piece here is the wheel that will lighten or darken your image. And we need to remove this to get to the actual light sensor piece, which is behind it. All you have to do for this is just remove the two screws at the bottom and then it will come off as a single piece. Behind it is just a little magnifying glass that we have to pop off. I like to get a little screwdriver under here so that I can just kind of work to kind of pop it off of it. A piece of this might break off when we're doing it, but you can use just like a little dot of glue when you go to reattach it so it's not the end of the world. To see the light sensor, we have to carefully move this black piece out of the way. This is a part of the shutter blade mechanism, so just be really careful. There's actually a lot of corrosion here, so I'm just gonna use some alcohol on it first, but also I'm gonna carefully scrape away at it to clean off as much as I can. The problem that I've encountered here is that there's more corrosion under this piece as well that I can't get to myself. This piece should look more like this, a clean window that lets as much light into it so that it can hit the sensor properly beneath it. First, the magnifying glass goes back on, and I'm just gonna put a dot of glue on it so that I can reattach it just really carefully. Then the exposure compensation wheel will screw back in. Just make sure that it's sitting properly and that as you turn the wheel, that this metal arm is moving with it as well. Then you can push the faceplate back on. You may have to work at this for a little bit and just kind of make sure that it's sitting properly and that it just kind of snaps back into place. There shouldn't be any gaps around the edges. And just make sure that everything like the focus wheel and the exposure dial are moving smoothly as well once you've got that faceplate back on. Then we can reattach the film door and there are little pegs inside the body that will kind of go back inside the hinges of the door. And now we're ready to test it out. So I'm gonna shoot a couple more in this one and then I'm gonna swap the pack into a one step and then just compare that because it's a cheaper camera, but I wanna see what the difference is between it. Oh, what do you got there? That's that's it. Take it. Oh, do I have to focus this uh, humdinger? You do. It's already focused to infinity though, so unless you're 
Actually, no, honestly, all my lenses and all my rangefinders just like set to infinity. Just focus. Yeah. Infinity. Yo, actually that is a really nice willow tree. Yeah, well, I kind of already did a, a picture in that area though, so I would... You know you should do? <laughs> I'm saying that's a really nice brick wall. <laughs> I like to put them in my breast pocket. Oh, hey. That's, that's why I wear shirts with breast pockets. This is when I went up shooting Polaroid, see? Yeah, it's a real Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Sonar One Step, and this is the Polatronic uh, side mounted flash. So I swapped out the pack from the SX70 into the One Step. Yeah. Hey, do you want to check if you're like in the fucking. Oh. <laughs> I like squeeze it. <laughs> like it's a sunset but this wasn't the sunset like this isn't what the sun was setting look like well, it, but like if someone was like hey what is that you'd be like it's a polaroid they'd be like yeah it is because it physically is but it also looks pretty good i would i'd stack this up too is keeping in the breast pocket like a champ this is a patented thing you get these shirts from a variety of places and you keep your polaroids in the front this Four six, here. And then that's seven. Oh, okay, yeah. There's not four here. Oh, yeah, there's four here. Sorry, you put it back in your pocket. I couldn't see it. Yeah, okay. Polaroid Let's pocket. review. This, like, the greens really do, like, come in. Like, it initially looks more magenta. <laughs> this one looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you get? Get out of there. <laughs> I don't know how many you can fit in the pocket. Oh, yeah, you can fit four in the pocket. Yes. Four in the pocket. At least that's maybe it. five in the pocket. Let me tell you. <laughs> You had your best. What do you mean? No, at uh, least you were like four. At least five. Yeah, no more than a whole pack. I would say two in box packs. Oh yeah, look at all that space in there. Three fingers, four fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so I've successfully shot all eight images from the uh, pack of SX70 Polaroid film that I had. As I looked at before, the first two shots are really blown out in terms of the exposure and there's just unevenness. When I actually cleaned the light sensor to the best of my ability, I did get some more interesting results. The first shot here is a big difference in comparison to the first two. The shot of Renee against like a brick wall just has really good looking contrast and really nice looking color as well. Like the skin tone as well as the brick wall behind her, it does look considerably different in comparison to like the first two shots. The lighting conditions outside were almost identical in terms of it being like really nice and bright out. And there just seems to be a better exposure on the camera's part here. I was also helped by my friend Alex who uh, abruptly showed up and then we uh, shot a few of these Polaroids. So, and these are good examples of how like the improvement of contrast on the image has changed. The first couple in the park of Alex and Carly really do not handle like the brighter areas versus like the darker grass areas and the darker areas around their clothes well. Whereas these couple of shots do show off like the fact that maybe the camera is in fact interpreting the light in the scene better because there is really nice contrast here. Especially in the one that Alex took here, the colors and the contrast here are looking much, much better in comparison to like the first two. This one though is kind of the holdout. Like there was a lot of sun behind us in the area that like the sun was setting and it was hitting the buildings in the background. But closer to me and the area that Alex is standing on the actual roof is more in shadow. So I'm thinking that probably the light sensor determined that there wasn't enough light, which means that the shutter stayed open for longer, which is why it's blurry and also that the exposure just didn't take. But because these cameras are all automatic, they can be overwhelmed and confused by like what you're subject looks like and the amount of light that's in the scene. The last one from the SX-70 is one that I'm really happy with as well. These ones are looking like overall they're really blue even when you compare them to like the first couple of shots in the park. For the colors I feel like the earlier stuff kind of leaned more into the magentas for the SX-70 film that I've shot before in like the Polaroid Originals brand but these ones are definitely coming out pretty blue. The last one which is actually one that I swapped into this camera I removed the pack in the dark for the last shot and shot it in the sonar one step here. So I decided to just kind of have fun with this one and shoot it with the flash on the side mount for this. I really like this camera as well because it's one of the very few Polaroid cameras I've ever come across that actually has the ability to take a cable release. So you can screw it into the shutter button on the side. And then when you're actually like apart from the camera, 
you can set it off without having to be near it. So this one looks good, if not somewhat different from the SX70 one on the folding camera, but the skin tones and even the contrast between like Alex's white shirt and like the darker areas around him and like me in my dark t-shirt do look really good. So if your only options for shooting the SX70 film are in like the older one-step cameras, then you don't always have to be afraid of doing that. There are some really solid results to be had from shooting this stuff in just like the one-step cameras here. But what I'm seeing in the pack does actually look somewhat better once I've taken the time to clean out the light sensor on this camera and then like shoot the rest of the pack and compare it to the first few. As much as I know the Polaroid stuff is expensive and sometimes hard to get your hands on and they seem to just go through rebrands more so than like major, major updates to this stuff, it is important to be aware of like the quality of the camera that you're using and doing stuff like that, especially the light sensor on these cameras when the exposure is all automatic, if you can get in there and fix them up and clean them out, sometimes it can make like a big, big difference for the Polaroids and the results that you're getting. I think the one of Renee is probably the best looking one of the pack in terms of the contrast and the amount of color in this one. The other ones are really, really blue when you look at them, but this one reproduces the red of the brick really well in image. I think my main disappointment was that I wasn't able to clean the light sensor as much as I'd hoped to. Now, there are places out there that service these cameras. One of the big ones that I'm not associated with, but I always see really great work and hear great things from is Brooklyn Film Camera, and they do like repairs on the SX-70, so I can uh, add links down there in the description below for that if you're looking to kind of breathe new life into these folding SX-70s and, you know, hopefully improve the results that you're getting if you're kind of disappointed with like the initial stuff that you're seeing when you're buying one of those expensive packs and only getting eight precious photos. So I guess be prepared to go through an image or a pack or a few packs before you kind of realize, you know, what these old cameras that you might have picked up are capable of doing and exactly how the film reacts to the cameras that you put them in. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll throw links down in the description for more information about, you know, disassembling and repairing and doing little stuff through these old folding SX-70 models to maybe hopefully improve them and help some of you guys out there with them. There's also links for the Analog Resurgence PO Box if you have some interesting stuff to send along that you wanna see me play around with on the channel or discuss more in a video, as well as the Analog Resurgence Patreon if you wanna support this stuff so that, you know, you can see more of these film scans and maybe a little more information specifically about like SX-70 repair and my own experiences, as well as a link for Pro 8mm out in California. If you're looking to pick up and get processed and scan stuff like Super 8 and 16mm, you can find all of that through the link down below. And of course, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.